Hi, welcome to Pet Pals. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Animal wrangling for us again this week is our volunteer coordinator, Sean Snyder, and we are kicking things off today with one of the kittens. We are slowly running out of kittens. Um, they just right in December, Christmas time, um, pretty much all of the remaining cats that we, the kittens that we had, um, found loving homes. And uh, a new guy who recently made his way to us is Mozzie. And Mozzie's about five to six months old. And Mozzie is a, a rare kitten in that, in our color coding system, um, Mozzie is blue, which means that he is really easygoing, he adapts really well to change, um, he is a cat that's going to be more inclined to let you pick him up and hold him. Um, he's just a, a really relaxed um, kind of guy, but still your typical kitten. He just handles um, being picked up and you know poked and prodded during vet exams a little bit better than most. But still going to be energetic, as you can see. Still wants to play, wants to get down and explore. Um, just a little bit more uh, manageable, maybe. Again, he's about five to six months old, uh, a little bit older. So um, when you get start to get to that six month old range, you kind of get cats that are showing more of what their ultimate personality would be. Whereas when they're that two and a half, three month old range, um, they're really still developing and you're not sure what you're gonna get. It's kind of a wild card. Um, because he is black, it might take him a little bit longer to find a home, but it's likely that his great personality will win out and he'll, he'll probably have a home in the next uh, week or so. So if you're interested in him, you definitely wanna make sure you take the time to stop in and check him out. All of our cats and kittens are adopted for a fee of $97.50. That covers all of their medical care while they're here, preventative vaccines, um, dewormer, flea and tick preventative. We make sure that they get microchipped and all of our cats, dogs, and rabbits are also spayed or neutered before they leave, which is really important. Um, so you'll get all of that for a fee of just $97.50, which is a great deal. If you want to visit with Mozzie, um, you can visit him here at the shelter. Our visiting hours are Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from 10 to 5, Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 8, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Our next guest is Lola. She is a little bit older, but still a kitten herself. Um, she is about seven to eight months old. She was a cat that was previously owned. Um, they had her for about, um, you know, eight months. So they got her as a young kitten and, and kept her. But they discovered that one of their family members was, was allergic to cats. And so unfortunately, they were unable to keep her in the house. So when we have people come in and they say, oh, I want to adopt this cat. Why does my entire family have to come in and meet with it? This is one of the reasons, you know, we want to make sure that we're setting these cats up for success for the rest of their lives. We want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to make sure that we're not sending them to a home where someone's allergic or maybe uh, some personalities don't match or things like that. So spending some time with just Lola might not be a good indicator, but if you come back a couple of times, if you hang out in the cat room, hang out in the kitty cabana, um, it's going to give you that opportunity to kind of see if you're going to have a reaction action um, because there is so much you know cat dander floating in the air so that you can go home if you know you're starting to have difficulty breathing or you start to get hives or something like that then maybe cat not a great situation for you maybe you should look at um, adopting a dog or um, you know one of our rabbits or guinea pigs or something like that but that is one of the really main important reasons why we have everybody come in to visit with an animal prior to adoption they say that she's used to being around uh, other cats. Um, maybe they got her from somewhere that had other cats, I'm not sure. Um, dogs, children of all ages. Um, they say she's playful and friendly, which she definitely is. She's um, a green color-coded cat here, which means that she is, you know, go, 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 a little bit of a, a higher energy, a little bit more squirmy when you're trying to hold them and things like that. But she's been really super sweet and affectionate here and she's going to make a great addition to any home. She definitely has a, a bit of a personality that uh, even after a recent space surgery is still shining through. So uh, she's a big personality kind of a girl. If you were interested in her, she would be adopted for that same 9750 uh, adoption fee that's standard here. And if you wanted to visit her, um, you can do that at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. We introduced you to several kittens, but uh, one of my favorite groups of, of cats at the shelter is are the senior cats. Uh, senior cats are great for so many reasons. Uh, number one, they are 
um, their personalities are very much established. You know what you're getting when you adopt a senior. And the other reason, um, you know, the kittens were all over the place while they were up here. You know, Amazi was trying to jump on the floor, whereas Rook here is a senior cat at eight to ten years old. He's um, interested in exploring, but you know, he's just kind of looking around. He's much more relaxed. Um, he hasn't been really phased by anything that's been happening to him. He's just taking it all in, and that's kind of. Um, you know, when you get into your home, it's going to be the same thing. You know, he's not going to be climbing up all of your curtains and launching himself off your couch um, onto the table across the hall. Um, so, he, you know, he's just going to be a little bit more relaxed. This guy came to us as a stray. Um, he was already neutered when he came in. He's not ear tipped. Um, he's very, you know, personable. Makes me think that maybe he had an owner at some point. Not sure what his story is, but we're hoping that we can get him into a nice home so that whatever time he has left um, can be spent with a loving family. A lot of people are concerned about adopting older pets because they don't they don't know how much time they'll have with them. So we're estimating his age to be anywhere from eight to 10 years old. And cats can live anywhere, um, you know, from that you know, 15 to 20 range. Sometimes it's a little bit less, that 12 to, to 15 range, but you still have plenty of time left with him and he's definitely deserving of a loving home. He's got a cute little face. He's kind of a big guy, not overweight, but just kind of a large presence. Um, he's got a cute little face. He's uh, definitely gonna make a great addition to any home. He's been very calm, very relaxed. We've color coded him orange, which just means he's individually average. He didn't have a problem walking past the other cats. So if you had another cat in your household, he would probably do well in that environment as well. Um, because he is a senior cat, he would go home for a discount um, with his adoption fee. Um, cats that are five to nine go home for a $20 reduction in their adoption fee, but he's listed as eight to 10, and we always go with that higher number. So um, 10 and up gets a $40 discount. So he would go home for a fee of $57.50. We color code all of our animals um, based on their personality and uh, Spree is color coded yellow, which is an indicator that he's a little bit shy. So he's not necessarily the cat that's gonna be right up at the front of the cage. Some of the other animals on the show today truly are right up at the front. They are not afraid to ask for attention, but this environment is a little bit nerve wracking for a lot of, of the animals that come in and Spree is a little bit um, more hesitant, a little more cautious than some of the others. And that doesn't mean that he's not a very sweet, affectionate, loving guy. He is. I've seen him with some of the volunteers. It just takes a little bit more patience um, when you're interacting with Spree. Um, he likes to hang out kind of in the back of the cage and you can, you know, reach out a hand or a finger and let him, you know, sniff and indicate where he wants to be petted. And then slowly, once he gets more comfortable with you, he comes right to the front. One of our regular volunteers was interacting with him yesterday. He was right at the front of the cage. She was rubbing his head. He was very content, um, but she was willing to, to move at his pace to get him comfortable. And that's what any potential adopter is going to have to do with him as well. And it's not necessarily just here in the shelter environment, but you also need to be a little bit more patient when you take them home. We do encourage all of our cat adopters to keep the animals isolated in one room for a 10 day period so that they're, um, they get comfortable in their space, but they're not overwhelmed with too much space. They've been living in a very confined environment. So too much can make them nervous and they wanna to try to go somewhere small. So then they hide under the couch, the bed. Sometimes kittens get in more creative uh, harder to find spaces. So that just gives them a little bit of a, an adjustment period. And that's something that I recommend again to all the people who are adopting cats, but it's especially important when you have the shy guys or the fraidy cats or those cats that have been living here for a really long time um, that are a little bit um, institutionalized, if you will. Um, again, Spree, um, came to us as a stray, so we're still learning about him, but even in his uh, vet check, our vet said that he was very affectionate, he was a very nice cat, um, so we've gone ahead and neutered him, given him all of his vaccines, he's ready to go. He just needs to find a family who is understanding of the fact that um, he's a little nervous and, and scared when he's meeting new people. Um, if you were interested in visiting with Spree, you could do so here. Um, for the time being at uh, 1832 Rosemont Avenue. 
Our final feline guest today is Braille, and Braille is about three months old. She's one of the younger kittens on the adoption floor right now, um, but she is a very special girl. Um, so we, uh, most people are familiar with Bentley. He is our blind dog, and Braille is our blind cat. Um, she came in this way. There's old trauma to her eyes, um, but it doesn't stop her from being your typical kitten. Um, she lives in a three-way cage with portholes and she navigates her way back and forth. She uses her litter box. She's able to eat her food. Um, she behaves like a typical kitten. We have adopted out um, obviously blind dogs like Bentley um, who, you know, just use their other senses to, um, you know, explore their environment. And we have also adopted out blind cats before in the past as well. Things that you want to keep in mind, you know, you just want to keep an eye on things. Don't move stuff around a ton so that they get familiar with where things are in their environment. You can use different textures to indicate that there's been a change in a space. So um, different types of rugs. So if you have hardwood floor, you can put rugs in certain areas or, you know, shifting from tile to carpet. Those types of things can help them establish where they are in their environment. They can play, as you can see, um, just like any other cat. They can, um, you know, use their, their mouths to explore things. They can hear it. They can smell things. So they're um, it's just a little bit extra. The main thing with her is not that she's blind, but it's that um, when she gets older, she will be needing some surgery on those eyes. Um, the one eye, there's not, um, basically there's just pieces of eye left in there and those pieces will need to be removed um, at some point when she's a little bit older. So um, she is gonna need an adopter who has um, the finances to provide some of that medical care going forward. But for the most part, Typical kitten, not a lot to, to be worried about. Um, you know, being mindful of you know where she is. Um, some people like to put bells on them so that you always know where they are because they can't see you, so that you don't inadvertently step on them, things like that. Um, you know, until she gets familiar with your house, if you have a lot of steps, maybe you put up a baby gate so she can't accidentally fall down the steps. But as they get more accustomed to their environment, um, they can navigate all of those things with relative ease. Um, if you are interested in Braille, I would suggest doing some uh, research um, so that you can be more prepared for what you're going to be taking on with a, a blind pet like, like she is. Um, Braille will be adopted for that typical $97.50 adoption fee, and you can see her here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. If cats aren't your thing, after the break we'll be introducing you to um, five adoptable dogs. We hope that you'll uh, stay with us. The Frederick County Department of Aging is proud to announce a new initiative that is designed to streamline the application process for several benefit programs that assist older adults and persons with disabilities. This information and assistance event is a partnership of the Frederick County Department of Aging, the Maryland Food Bank, and the Frederick County Department of Social Services. One day per month at each of the county senior centers, the Department of Aging will host representatives to assist with the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program application, formerly known as Food Stamps, and the Energy Assistance application. Also on hand will be the Senior Health Insurance Program Coordinator who will answer Medicare questions and screen for Medicare subsidy programs. These events will begin at 10 a.m. and take place at the Frederick, Urbana, Emmitsburg, and Brunswick Senior Centers. Appointments are encouraged, walk-ins are welcome. For more information to make an appointment or in case of inclement weather, please call the Frederick County Department of Aging at 301-600-3520. Welcome back. Our first dog today is Pup Pup, and I know he doesn't look like much of a puppy um, at 63 pounds, but he's only 10 months old. So he's still um, very much a puppy uh, here, and uh, all of our puppies are adopted through what we call our puppy process. So that means that um, we take up to four applications for those animals, and then we choose the best fit for the dog um, 
take a little bit more uh, applications for, for puppies because um, puppies are a lot of work and we want to make sure that we are definitely getting the best fit situation and best fit for the animal. Um, Pup Pup um, would still be adopted for that $150 adoption fee and um, Pup Pup is a little bit um, different than your typical puppy um, because he's not that, that puppy that's full of crazy energy. Here in this environment, Pup Pup is very shy. So he needs a family that is going to be okay with that and be very slow with him and, and patient and work with him and not just be like, oh, I got a new puppy, let's go to PetSmart because that might not be something that he is gonna be okay with that. Um, right now you can see that his tail is not as tucked as it has been previously, but it's down low. It's kind of tucked in between his legs. Um, he's definitely showing signs of being a little bit nervous. He's got a little shake to him, but as he gets more comfortable in an environment, he warms up. One of the things that we've seen that really helps him is one of our volunteers has taken time to sit and read to him, and that helps a lot of dogs. It just is a nice, calm, relaxing thing. It helps them um, settle in, sleep, um, when they're in an environment that's very scary, very loud, noisy for them. So it's definitely something that's been benefiting him. We do behavior assess all of our dogs here. And what we found is obviously he's super shy. Um, he's very cautious when you approach his kennel, um, but he does keep his kennel clean, which is nice. Um, his previous owner does say he is house trained, but not yet crate trained. Um, he's uh, no reaction or scared of other dogs. Um, he's Easy to obtain when he knows you, but sometimes he takes a little bit of coaxing. Um, he's easy to walk or nervous and will kind of walk under your feet. Um, but he loves to be petted. Um, he's a little head shy, but once he warms up to you, he loves the attention. Um, so you wanna make sure you're reading all of this profile um, when you come in to meet with him and that you're sure that you can take on a dog that's gonna be a little bit um, more of a project, needs a little bit of time to, to kind of feel comfortable in your home. If you're interested in him, he would be adopted for that $150 adoption fee. Our next guest is Eeyore, and he's a young guy uh, at one and a half years old. He's a, a white and black chihuahua mix. He came to us from an environment where there were uh, too many pets. So he is a little shy, a little under socialized, but he does get along well with other dogs. He currently has a roommate um, that lives in his kennel with him, Jojo, who was on the show last week. They came from the same home. They don't have to be adopted together, although they could, um, but they're just in the kennel together, keeping each other company so they feel a little bit more secure. Like we talked about with Pup Pup, you are gonna need a home where that's very understanding. Probably a quieter environment would be beneficial for him, um, just so that um, he doesn't have as many things to be scared or nervous about. People moving uh, slowly toward him is gonna be helpful. Um, these guys, unfortunately, also don't really know how to walk on a leash, so they need an owner who's gonna be committed to helping them with that. They are also not really housebroken, so they need an owner who is willing to um, house train uh, a, a small dog. Um, what we've been doing for the most part is carrying these guys um, until um, we can get them out and you know let them walk around on a leash a little bit. Um, some of them are doing better than others, but it is something that you'll really need to work on um, in your home environment. Once they get kind of comfortable with you, they've been very sweet. We've not had any issues with them. They are um, easy to pick up, but again, they are very nervous. And one of the things you might notice when you're walking by their kennel is that they do come to the front and they bark at you. And they're, it's just because they're scared. They're trying to intimidate people. They can't get away because they're in a confined space. So they're trying to make you go away so that they can feel safe and secure. Um, our behavior assessment notes for this guy say, um, again, not super housebroken, but he does use his separate run to go to the bathroom, so he understands the difference between where his bedding in is in the other side. Um, he's fearful when you approach his kennel. He reacts favorably to other dogs. Again, he's used to, to being with a lot of other dogs, mostly small dogs, but if you do have another animal, we especially, uh, obviously a dog, we want you to bring your dog in uh, to meet with Eeyore just to see what kind of um, situation that might be. Um, He's uh, easy to walk um, for the most part when he's out, um, but again, most of the time not capable of walking. Um, and he just needs somebody who's again gonna be super patient with him. Um, Eeyore would be adopted for our standard adoption fee for dogs, which is 92.50. You can visit him here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our next guest has a little different energy level than our previous ones. They were all uh, 
shy and Brinkley is the exact opposite of shy. She's very outgoing, she's full of energy. Um, she's about three to four years old, so um, this is not something she's gonna grow out of. This is her personality. She is a high energy dog, so she needs somebody who's gonna have the time to walk her and, and run off that energy, um, whether it's just in your backyard, uh, making sure you're playing fetch and having an, an outlet for all of those things and um, frisbee or whatever you want to do with her um, or taking her on hikes, um, long walks, all of those things. Um, you want to make sure that you're providing her with that outlet because just like a, a child who's left unsupervised and is bored, they're going to find something to do to entertain themselves and dogs will do the same thing and it's not always what you would prefer uh, them to be getting into. So if you're not providing her with toys and enrichment and, and um, you know, that physical exercise, then you might walk home to a de-stuffed couch. So you want to make sure that you're really putting a little bit of effort into that. One of the things that we have noticed about Brinkley, um, even though that she's a stray, is that she is a super high jumper. She has um, definite skills in that area. So if you have a short fence, that's probably not going to be something that you can leave her out in unsupervised. So if you have that four foot fence, she can probably jump over that. So you would need to supervise her in the backyard, maybe even keep her on a, a long lead on a harness like she's on now, but with um, maybe a 20 foot leash. So you can still sit on your porch, she can run around, but you know she's not going to be able to escape the yard. Um, but that's why um, in our kennel, she's in a covered kennel so that she can't climb out, jump out, any of those types of things. Um, we behavior assess all of the dogs here. She's color coded purple for her energy level just because we want to make sure people um, understand what they're getting into. It's not going to be an easy dog, um, but she uses her separate run um, or outside kennel to go to the bathroom. She's excited when you approach her. She reacts favorably to other dogs unless they are barking at her and then she's a little bit, uh, she gives a little bit back. She's easy to obtain. She's difficult to walk because she pulls and jumps all over the place. Um, no issues with food aggression. She reluctantly gives up objects when asked. When you're petting her, she does become playfully aroused. So she's, um, you know, gets into that, you know, mouthy thing, wants to be on you. She's all over the place. So. You just need to be prepared for that. Um, purple cards, generally, we say that they do better with some older children just because Brinkley um, doesn't understand that she can't jump up on young kids. She might knock them over. Um, you know, she might be mouthy with them. So those are, those are why we're making those things, those uh, restrictions. We wanna make sure that we're setting the dog up for success, but also your family. Um, Brinkley would be adopted for that adult dog fee, which is uh, 92.50, and she is a red and white uh, pit bull mix. She's three to four years old. Changing things up a little bit, our next guest is Thunder, and you might notice that Sean is missing. Um, that's because um, Haley, one of our kennel techs, has been spending a lot of time with Thunder, and he's much more comfortable with her. So in the past, when we've had um, certain animals on, maybe um, like with Bubbles, Kira, one of our other staff, brought Bubbles out because she was very comfortable with that cat. So it just makes it a little bit easier and shows them in their best light. Thunder is a, a one-year-old shepherd mix, and he weighs in at 110 pounds. So he is, um, if you're looking for a small dog, definitely not him. Um, he doesn't show really well in his kennel, so he is available by appointment only, which means if you're interested in him, you call, you can stop in and visit and say, hey, I would like to see Thunder. And then instead of having you just kind of walk by his kennel, we're going to send you outside ahead of time, and then Haley or somebody else would bring him out so that you can meet him out there. Um, a lot of dogs don't show well because they're fearful in their kennel, and um, we don't want um, him to have those associations with you. But outside, like he is right now, he is um, just a really nice dog. He's very affectionate. He's very playful. Um, he knows some basic manners types of things. Um, apparently he knows sit, he knows paw. So he is very trainable. He was very excited at the prospect of treats. He likes toys. He likes Kongs. He's done well with other dogs to the best of my knowledge. Um, so um, it's just something where um, that kennel environment being confined um, definitely um, impacts a lot of the dogs here. Um, because he is difficult to restrain and he's quite large, he required sedation. So that's something that you're going to need to take into account. If the vet needs to do things for him, he's going to need to be sedated. Um, and then we are looking for um, two big things for him. We're looking for an adult home only or children that are 16 and up. And we are looking for um, long, large dog experience. So if you've never had a large dog before, we're not going to adopt him out to you. So we're looking for someone who has... Um, 
I think Anatolian Shepherd, which is a large shepherd breed experience, um, people with Great Dane experience, Mastiff experience, St. Bernard experience, those types of things, um, because it is different than, than owning a dog that is much smaller. We want to make sure you're prepared um, and that we're setting him up for success. Um, all of his paperwork is up front. You can read it, get to know him a little bit more. Um, we did behavior assess him, and he did pretty well, um, only didn't do well with that restraint but he keeps his kennel clean, which is something that's very important to a lot of people. Um, he um, is f friendly um, sometimes in his kennel, but sometimes he aggressively barks. Um, he reacts favorably to other dogs, even in the kennel. Other dogs can walk by him for the most part. Um, it's just people that he's a little scared of. Um, he's easy to walk, but sometimes a little nervous. Um, no issues with food aggression at all. Um, they were unable to test him for object guarding and he really loves to be petted. Um, so he has a lot of great qualities, but he's just a little nervous uh, around new people. If you were interested in him, again, you can ask to see him just when you're walking through the shelter or you could call to schedule an appointment. The phone number here is 301-600-1546. So if you're interested in him, you definitely want to make sure that you call and schedule that appointment and uh, he would be adopted for our adult dog fee, which is $92.50. Our last dog today is a repeat guest, and uh, he was on last week, but he still doesn't have any applications, so this is another great opportunity to show people how great Spot is. Spot is a one-and-a-half-year-old uh, black-and-white pipple mix. He is uh, named appropriately because he is, of course, covered in spots, large spots, small spots, speckles. Um, he's a very handsome guy. Um, one of the things that we've been noticing is that Spot hasn't been doing really well with his meet and greets with other dogs. He's not necessarily bad with dogs in the shelter, but he um, is having a difficult time kind of um, dealing with dogs that are a little bit more reserved and things like that. So he might be better as an only dog. So if you're just looking for one dog to give all your love and attention to, then Spot might be a great option for you. Um, we did have him out with other dogs at our Holiday Happy Tales event, and he did find, you know, mingling and interacting with those other dogs. Um, sometimes he would get a little frustrated when they wanted to play too much with him. Um, but um, he really didn't have a, a, ma a major issue with, you know, being in an environment with, you know, five other dogs. Um, he was previously owned. The owner moved and couldn't take them, oh, take him along with them after having him for only about six months. They did have other dogs in the household. They were smaller dogs. Um, uh, a terrier mix and uh, a dachshund, and uh, they were able to successfully rehome those guys. Uh, apparently, uh, fun facts about uh, Spot, he does not like push mowers. Um, not a thing for him. And the previous owner is saying that he doesn't, he likes dogs, but once he gets to know them. So if you are really interested in Spot and you have another dog, it might be a situation where you need to bring your dog in multiple times so that Spot gets more accustomed to them, so that they're not a stranger anymore. And then um, that might be a better situation for him. So it could take a little time. And we've had people do that before, you know, uh, three and four meet and greets just to make sure that um, it's something that is going to be workable in a household so they don't have to bring the dog back. We have behavior assessed him as we do with all of our animals here. Um, he uses a separate runner outside kennel to go to the bathroom but a little house training work might be necessary. He's very friendly when people approach his kennel. He reacts favorably to other dogs outside of the kennel. Inside of his kennel he, he barks and growls. Um, he's easy to obtain, a little difficult to walk, he pulls, but I haven't had much issue with him. Um, he's been walking pretty nicely for me. Um, loves to be petted, leans in, enjoys touch, a very tolerant, wore a t-shirt recently, was cool with that, um, met a bunch of new people that he didn't know, didn't have any issues doing that. So he's a great dog, just needs a little bit of time to warm up, warm up to other canine friends. If you're interested in him, you can visit him here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. We are open to the public six days a week, Monday through Saturday. We hope that you enjoyed meeting some of our adoptable animals today. Um, while our adoption floor is thinning out, which is a great thing for us, there are still plenty of pets to choose from, not only here, but also at the Cat Cafe uh, in Newmarket. And then we also have some dogs that are living in foster care. So be sure to ask about those if you didn't see something you were interested in. And then next week, we'll be back again with more uh, of FCAC's adoptable pets.